October 9th, 2016, the world changed. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. At ESMO, the immunotherapy session, we saw a keynote 024. Do we have consensus amongst the panel that PDL1 testing is now standard of care in the first line setting? Absolutely. Yep. No question. No dissenters? Mm -mm. Uh, absolutely, but with a mild anxiety of the limitations and operating characteristics of that test. Okay. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll come back to that. But, Valley, tell us why. So, th that day, the uh, data of uh, the Keynote uh, 24 study were presented. That was a highly um, anticipated uh, clinical trial result because we already had an announcement prior to the official presentation of the data that it was positive. And it really um, changed the landscape dramatically because up until that day, all the options that we had in this setting were chemotherapy or chemotherapy combinations with bevacizumab. And I don't think anybody dreamed of a day where we would have a single agent therapy beating chemotherapy in this setting. So it was a quite important um, advance in non-small cell lung cancer treatment for our patients, I think. And to simply present the data, I think the trial adopted a test that was prospectively tested and retrospectively tested by Merck in its development for characterization of PDL1 expression in tumor cells. And the cutoffs for positivity were defined in a scientific way. Um, the patients that were selected for this first line trial had expression more than 50%. And the trial demonstrated superiority of pembrolizumab uh, against standard chemotherapy in terms of both progression-free survival and overall survival. Response rate was also higher. So this defines a group of patients in our practice. We need to test them to find them that may benefit from upfront immunotherapy, may derive deep and long-lasting responses and may not need to be exposed to cytotoxic chemotherapy for a long time. Right. So, so we know from Keynote 024 that there were uh, just north of 1,900 patients that mm -hmm. were enrolled or screened uh, in that 305 were um, randomized. Right. So the 1,600 patients didn't make it. So when you mm -hmm. think about clinical practice, you know, this is applicable to a minority of your patients. Mm -hmm. But for those patients today, to your point, um, this kind of blew chemotherapy out of the That's water. Right. And, and we, we've never seen one drug mm -hmm. do as well as two drugs, in this, as, long, as long as they're active drugs in this setting. And it was actually quite impressive. I think it's the only oral session where the presenter, Martin Reck, uh, actually got a standing ovation mm -hmm. that lasted uncomfortably long because I was the next speaker <laughs> <laughs> for Checkmate 026, which was a similar trial design, but a different cutoff for pd one mm -hmm. And so, you know, the question is, you know, which patients um, are going to um, benefit greater relative to chemotherapy um, certainly in the nivolumab, Checkmate 026, nivolumab was not worse than chemotherapy in terms of overall survival. So we have some issues to sort out about um, um, selection of patients. And Jared, your um, former mentor and your current colleague, mm -hmm, Dr. Mm -hmm, Langer, mm -hmm. was uh, also a presenter in that section with Keynote 021. And even though this was a randomized phase two trial, um, I, I was pretty impressed with, with the results. So was I. I mean, in, to a sense, this trial flies in a little bit in the face of the culture of immunotherapy. Mm -hmm. I think um, the culture of immunotherapy is to get the chemo out, right? We, yeah. We've already spoken of that. But this trial said, okay, for that roughly three quarters of patients who are not going to be um, high expressors, um, what can we do for unselected patients? So this was a trial of uh, pemetrexid and carboplatin alone or with the addition of the PD-1 antibody pembrolizumab. Um, response rate was improved from 29 to 55%. PFS was uh, improved from 8.9 to 13 months, and I know you'd call me out if I didn't give you the hazard ratio. It was 0.53. 
Um, and overall survival was statistically similar between the arms, but trended in the right direction. It Very was point, early. It was 0.9 yeah, in the yeah. early uh, results early and for... certainly trending um, the right way. And importantly, given that we're adding to the standard, uh, the treatment-related adverse events weren't much worse with the mm -hmm. addition of uh, pembrolizumab. Is, is that a general feeling across the panel that certainly the toxicity profile was not prohibitive? No. Adding um, okay. pembro, yeah. Because I have a point to make, that's okay. why I'm asking. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Please, make ahead. your point. Well, no, go ahead. I'll, I'll make my point in a second. <laughs> So, you know, it was a little worse across the board. If you look at all of the bars, there, there, it was a little bit worse, and you saw um, your immune-related adverse events, and there are certainly patients for whom immunotherapy is either contraindicated or relatively contraindicated, but it really was rather tolerable in the global perspective for the treatment-related advantage that it offered. I mean, you know, we have a seasoned panel of lung cancer people here who are used to giving probably a lot more toxic mm -hmm. stuff than, than what this trial showed, right? And, and the point as to where I was going with that is one of the impressive things about Keynote 021 um, was they did have 20 patients that were greater than 50% PDL1 positive. Mm -hmm. And their response rate was 80%. Mm -hmm. Now, response rates with cytotoxic chemotherapy haven't driven survival endpoints. But we know that uh, response rates with immunotherapy can be very durable. Mm -hmm. So for the first time in my life, I'm looking at Keynote 024 when it was uh, presented and said, wow, they had a 70% one-year survival. Mm -hmm. And then Dr. Langer got up there and showed that data and I said, why shouldn't we expect a 90% one-year survival? Uh, Pembrocarbopemetrexid in the high expressors. If you have an 80% response rate, I mean, I, I was very optimistic about this. As you say, there's been this groundswell, if you will, to kind of ditch the chemo in the, in the area of immunotherapy. But I'm not sure that that's the right strategy. And I felt um, uh, I'm involved with the Empower trials, which as, mm -hmm. as Valley is uh, also. I, I felt much more optimistic about those trials after seeing that phase two data. Now, again, I commented before that, you know, the oncologic highway in lung cancer is littered with positive phase twos that never made it in phase three. But yeah. this was impressive. If I may make the point, I think the FDA thinks so as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, because exactly. there is a consideration. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, I mean, th it's not an approval, but there is a consideration of this data for potential change in the label with the addition of chemotherapy right. to pembrolizumab. I think many in the academic community felt that this data indicated that we had an option for the patients that are not high expressors because there appears to be benefit across the board even for patients that have lower expression. Yeah. Um, so that may be another way to look at this data. But I was a little surprised by that FDA opinion, mm -hmm. to be honest with you, because this, is, again, at the end of the day, this phase is, a, two data. what, 120 yeah. patients on a phase two trial, mm -hmm. and, and to make that was a bit surprising. Yeah. Yeah. I, and if it Would happens, you, what, what do we do with Dr. that Langer information? Did Dr. Langer have anything to do with this? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think he was as surprised as anybody. And if it does if it does get approval, what do we do with that information in the over 50% expressors? Do we right. limit them to Pembro single agent, and then we do the combination and the greater than one, but less than 50, so it'll it'll be a little confusing. I think we'll have to think about mm -hmm. it. And speak to the patients, right? Pa yeah. Patients have different values. 